Hey everyone, how are you today? God is awesome. I have been pressing in and seeking the Lord on the kingdom dynamics and how the Lord wants the new wineskin of the New Testament church designed to be awakened, reformed, and activated in today's church world, you know. For the past uh, several years, I've been talking about how apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers need to come in to their full gifting. People understand their identity in Christ and who they are, and that people recognize their assignment, their mantle, their calling. Um, and for so long in the church world today, we've had such, uh, a, you know, infrastructure and uh, design of the church that's mainly run by a pastor. And you have evangelists and teachers, but the apostles and prophets haven't been honored and recognized uh, in their position as they should. But <clears throat> the Lord is shaking things up, and He does want the fullness of His expression of the apostolic prophetic along with the evangelical pastoral and teacher uh, so we have lots of work to do in the body of Christ to bring people into the realization and awakening and the education and revelation of the fullness of Christ but you know it all starts and must be from uh, our intimacy with the Lord and from a place of rest in Him because if everything's just done mechanically or by knowledge, you know, then where is the relationship factor with Christ in the mix? You know, a lot of people want to preach well and operate in the anointing real strong, <clears throat> but it's not very impressive to the Lord if they're not spending intimacy time with him in the secret place. The word of God says in Psalm 91 that he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I was reading in Acts 13 some interesting things here about the apostolic culture uh, that we are in today in the new wineskin in the new covenant of Christ. <clears throat> Acts 13 1 the word of God says in the church at Antioch there were prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon, called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manaen, who had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. Now, Usually, in apostolic circles that uh, I've been in, <clears throat> where the churches are an apostolic structure, five-fold ministry structure, uh, they usually have a head apostle or apostle that is in charge of the ministry, so to speak, to be the government, uh, you know, the one that people turn to for the leadership. And usually that apostle activates and sends out people and speaks to gifts and callings and works with the prophets and the pastors among the flock to grow the uh, and disciple the sheep. And then, of course, you have teachers who come in and break down the, the revelation and the knowledge of the things of the kingdom and of people's callings. Many things are in uh, operation under the leadership of an apostle <clears throat> but in this particular passage of scripture i noticed it wasn't about a lead apostle uh activating or commissioning barnabas and saul to be sent out when the holy spirit revealed they were being led by the spirit they weren't going by man's structure of a religious way to ordain and send out <clears throat> they were actually fasting and praying and seeking the Lord and being with the Lord in the secret place. And the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work I have called them. So as they were pressing in, prophets and teachers, it said, 
prophets and teachers. It wasn't an apostle at that moment. It was prophets and teachers fasting and praying. And Holy Spirit spoke to them and said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work which I have called them. So they didn't sit here and go, Oh, wait, let's go get the apostle or the pastor and let's ordain or commission Barnabas and Saul. No, it says in verse 3, So after they fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them out. <clears throat> this is what needs to come in to the understanding in the body of Christ in this era is that we are an apostolic culture. We are apostolic through Jesus Christ. We are apostolic in being led by Holy Spirit giving us instructions. I know it goes against the grain and a lot of churches are structured that the submission to the pastor and the order has to be uh, upheld and honored as uh, primary, but if you study out the church structure in the book of Acts, you will notice all the fivefold giftings in operation in various passages of Scripture and different people. And this particular passage is <clears throat> prophets and teachers were apostolically used by Holy Spirit to lay hands on Barnabas and Saul for the work that they were called to to confirm it and send them out to activate them and launch them. You know, not put them under their thumb or not schedule an appointment uh, with the leadership, uh, the rest of the leadership. No, they just took it upon themselves because Holy Spirit revealed that instruction to them and they knew the authority that they had apostolically through God's Spirit. And so therefore, they released the apostolic activation and commissioning to Barnabas and Saul. Now, were they uh, apostles? No, it said they were prophets and teachers, but they had an apostolic flow in their DNA. You can be an apostolic prophet. You can be a prophetic apostle. You can be an apostolic evangelist. You can be an evangelical apostle. You know, there's mixtures uh, uh, of the gifts and callings and attributes, but it's all Christ. You know, it's all His expression. It's all Him leading because Jesus Christ is the head of the church. This is where we need to get to people. God perfecting His bride, being without spot or wrinkle as He returns for His bride, His church. We are married to the Lord in this divine mystery, so to speak, where He is our husband king of glory and we are the bride of Christ you know we are joined to him as one and we have that access into the secret place with him the intimacy of heart to heart uh, face to face you know we are with him he is with us we are in the garden with him we are in the king's chambers with him and so I just thought it was interesting that this apostolic culture in the prophets and teachers at the church at Antioch, they uh, were knowledgeable enough and understood that apostolic culture and fivefold ministry that they uh, obeyed in the leading of the Holy Spirit. The church today needs to get into this maturity and this place beyond the elementary principles of Christ. You know, many churches today, and, uh, and even myself, being raised in the church culture and in church and and have done church for several decades. You know, we have had a set way of doing things and traditions, even in our denominations where we preach pretty much the same thing, repentance from sin, uh, salvation in Christ Jesus. You know, we preach Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We preach uh, righteousness and uh, those type of things, baptisms, like Paul said in Hebrews 6. But, you know, leaving the elementary principles of Christ. Let us go on unto perfection. Well, this is one of those things here in Acts 13. They were in a state of mature fruit and perfection in these things that they had an understanding uh, uh, beyond just basic elementary principles in Christ and basic church structure. No, they were being... Uh, used and led by the Holy Spirit 
So if we recognize one another by Holy Spirit and operate by Holy Spirit, we're going to be walking in the kingdom with a maturity and a discernment that we know one another in kingdom paradigm uh, and in kingdom mindset to where we're not uh, religious and being governed by religious man structures, but we are being governed by Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. God is good. And thank you for tuning in. And God bless you today. Shaka Jesus.